So here we go. Hey everyone, it's Jenny Heckman with Jenny's Tattletales, and today I have Veronica Scott. She's a sci-fi author, and uh, she is here to uh, promote her book. And now you have to tell me if I get this wrong. Is it Jamoakan? Well, I pronounce it Jamoakan, but you know. Jamoakan. Jamoakan. Yeah. Um, uh, Badari? Badari? Yes, Badari, yeah. I, I love it. I love the title and I love different names and different world building. I think that it's just so cool and creative. It's awesome. I guess when I created him originally, I wasn't really thinking about the fact that he would eventually have his own book. So I <laughs> give him maybe the simplest name, you know. Well, and I did look at your website. You've written a lot of books. Yeah, yeah. I have like 43 published. Oh, wow. I can, I'm just, I'm struggling to get, get, my series go on and everything. I just, I'm in so awe of, of people that can do that. How many books nice. do you write a year? Well, last year hardly counts because last year was, you know, a mess for everybody. Six yeah. to nine, more and more. Wow. wow. Yeah, but, you know, this is my full-time job, so. That is incredible. That's and my really children cool. are grown. And so, you know, if I really put my mind to it, I have the time. And how many children do you have? I have two daughters. Oh, daughters are the best. They're so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have three grandchildren, so. Three. What are their ages? Well, my oldest grandson is 18, and then my other two are their three and nine months. Oh. oh. <laughs> Quite a spread. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, I'm on what? My fourth or fifth trip through all the Disney movies now, you know, because oh. each generation discovers them fresh. Right, and yeah. then you get to go, you probably know all the songs by heart. Uh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. that's pretty awesome. Okay, well, you um, have done your author interview and that was done uh, last Friday, uh, right. Right, Friday, Thursday. On, uh, Thursday, I'm sorry, on uh, the 14th. So, um, so at the end of this, I'll be telling you how uh, to get back to her interview because we're gonna be asking her different questions than we did Ooh originally so because uh, we didn't want you to have to we have to keep you on your toes here okay, <laughs> okay i'm just going to just say real quick uh that veronica scott is the us uh, a today best-selling author uh she grew up in a house with a library as its heart wow that is a wonderful way to put it um dad loved science fiction mom loved ancient history and veronica thought there needed to be more romance in everything when she ran out of books to read she started writing her own series i absolutely love that uh, Seven-time winner of the SFR Galaxy Award, as well as a National Excellence in Romance Fiction Award. Veronica is also the proud recipient of a NASA Exceptional Service Medal relating to her former day job, not her romances. Wow, that's that just begs a lot of questions, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it's an actual medal. So when they gave it to me, this was years ago, the center director pinned it on, like it was a corsage, you know, that was... <laughs> Was kind of oh. awkward for him and me <laughs> so you don't do that anymore they just sort of hand you the box. oh <laughs> that was cool no more getting handsy <laughs> well he was such a lovely you know he's a scientist and it was just not many that not that many women had received one at our center prior to that and so i guess they were just figuring out that you know okay pinning it on the lapel is not going to work oh that's incredible so you really know what you're talking about when you're talking about sci-fi and all of those yeah. things that's, that's really fascinating i i, yeah. I could probably it was, it was really it was great to be part of nasa and on the business side of things and you know do my thing to support the space program yeah, were you part of like the the Challenger series or? No, at Jet Propulsion Laboratory is robotic exploration of space. So we um, we did you know the probes to Jupiter and Saturn and Mars oh, rovers. And, so exciting! That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Really, really. Yeah, cool. It, it was. It was a very. I really enjoyed my career there. So. Yeah, and now you're into writing. So you got to yeah. tell me uh, where did it all start? Where did your interest all originate? Well, I started writing when I was seven and my dad was a science fiction fan. So we would watch the old movies late at night together, you know? And so the first movie I really remember is Forbidden Planet. Oh, I that one. I remember. And um, Flash Gordon, the old 1930s Flash Gordon serial. So, I mean, I just began by loving science fiction. Oh, I love and I read that. Andre Norton and, you know, a lot of all the classics and started writing my own because there's just oh. not enough. And there wasn't yeah. enough romance so. in science fiction. Yeah, the, it's yeah. true. 
it's, it's especially not, at that time, you know, if I, the books that I read, they were very romance, non-existent. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay. So do you have uh, some words that you live by or a kind of motto? Well, I never give up. I never give up. There's always a way under or around or some alternative. So I'm not easily defeated. Oh. And um, I try to take things one step at a time because it can get really overwhelming if you, you know, you stack up everything that has to be done. It's better to break it into small pieces. Absolutely. Um, wow, both really great. Those are really great ones. That's really good. Um, if you could turn one of your books into, and it could be any of your books, but if you, if, uh, and I'm going to say it again, is it Jamakin? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, okay. um, uh, who would you want, if it was turned into a movie, who would you want to portray your characters? Well, the book I would actually turn into a movie first would be Wreck of the Nebula Dream, which is based on the Titanic sinking. That's the one all my readers always tell me they would love to see made into a movie, that one. Oh, wow. Very wow. exciting. That one would be easier because it's a, you know, a single event. It's this spacecraft that runs into a disaster and, and how the a small group of people survives. But I mean, if you had to make Jamican into a movie, I think I think I would go with actors that I don't even know who they are yet. Because Aww. I think that's exciting, you know? Then then when you're watching them on the screen, it's more easy to say, oh, this is really that character because yeah. you haven't already seen them in, you know, 57 other, other movies. Yeah. <laughs> not, not to criticize anybody's acting or anything, but it's just, you know. Yeah, so, I mean, that would, that would be my thing. Plus, you don't know who's out there. You know, there's so many actors that deserve a break and yeah. do a really good job. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Sometimes you get saturated with so many and you've really put them into a, a little pigeonhole and, and it's hard for yeah. them to break out of. And it's also hard for other people to see your work come to life in doing something like that. Yeah, so I, think, I think that would be more fun. When I did the audio books, I have about five of my books made into audio books. And that actor, the voice actor, and I, we had a really good time collaborating on them. And it was exciting to see, you know, how the actor interprets your character and the events that happened in your novel and their thoughts about it. That would be fun to collaborate. I agree. I just actually had my second book turned into an audio book, but it's my first time ever doing it. Uh -huh. And her take on it was so fun. It just yeah. incredible in voices and ways that they did it that you didn't think we're nearly as snarky. She made snarky and it turned out better. So I, I think yeah. you're absolutely- it, it was good. I, I enjoyed working with my actor. So, yeah, but funny. you know, audiobooks anymore, at least from my standpoint there, you don't, they don't earn out and there's just all these issues. So I don't, they don't do any at the moment. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Um, so what do you love that most people don't like and wouldn't understand why you do? I don't know. I don't really go by <laughs> what other people like or don't nothing, like. I nothing, mean, uh, nothing weird or quirky that you like that uh, other people might not understand. I'm trying to think. I'm, I can't really oh. think of anything. I mean, okay. Uh, let's see. How? And about... if it was that hard to understand, I probably wouldn't admit to it on a podcast <laughs> anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, okay. If writing is your first passion, what is your second? Mm. Well, reading, reading. Uh, you're a big I reader. like to lose myself in a really good book, you know, and fortunately there's so many out there. That... Do you read sci-fi or do you read other? Well, primarily I read sci-fi romance. I read fantasy, paranormal. I like Regency romance. Oh, nice. Romantic suspense. Every once in a while I read a contemporary. I really, really enjoyed Olivia Dade. She wrote uh -huh. some excellent books last year. So, you know, it's kind of eclectic, but I don't read much contemporary romance. I like it to be set somewhere else, you know. Yeah, that's kind of fun. You get a, kind of an escape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I read, you know, a lot of nonfiction. I like, um, well, if I'm doing research, you know, I have a whole library of books on ancient Egypt because I read a series set in ancient Egypt and Oh, have every Titanic book every pub ever published probably. I had I went through a Titanic kind of uh, obsession phase as well. I know quite a few of those those books myself, and um, yeah, it's what a what an interesting, fascinating night, and how it yeah, all kind of yeah. has now uh, covered history 
and you read it now and you look back and and yeah it's, it's yeah. pretty incredible pretty incredible. yeah and there's still every year it seems like they find some new fact or nugget of information i haven't seen before yeah yeah, yeah. Now, have, you, I, have you gone have has it come to your town and and where you've gotten to go see the the museum the it's uh, been here a couple of times and neither time have i managed to get there but that's um, all right you know yeah yeah. been there in my in my imagination and i think james cameron did a good job of depicting titanic yeah he did. the old british movie from the 1950s that's my favorite and i that's remember they one. that's a good yeah one. they really did a good job and they had actual survivors and one of the officers as you know on set consultants so i think that one's probably the closest i think the last survivor of the titanic died just like within the last couple of years the last yeah. Person. Yeah. It was very she was, yeah she was very very young at the time and yeah, <laughs> yeah. But she survived yeah yeah it's incredible okay uh if you could spend time with one of your characters from from any of your books whom would it be and what would you do during that day i think i'm i don't hmm. At this point, if we're talking about the current series, I'd probably want to spend the day with Jill. She's the mate of the Supreme Alpha. She was the heroine of the book, first book. And it would be interesting to go through a day with her and see you know, how she handles issues relating to the pack of the Badari warriors and how they handle, there's a large human population that's been rescued. And it would just be interesting to spend the day with her. So is this set on a, another planet then or in yeah. space or, okay, so it's on an, another planet and- Yeah, I don't ever visit the earth in my books. I prefer ah. to be out there on the edge of the galaxy. That's well, so cool. well, why would you? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, hey, let's get out there. Yeah. So yeah, the basic concept of the series is that these uh, soldiers, the Badari warriors were created by alien scientists and then some two, be soldiers against the humans. And then at some point, the aliens kidnapped an entire colony from the frontier, a human colony, and brought them to be used in experiments. And at some point, the Alpha, Idar, and Jill get together, become mates, and Jill manages to get the Badari free. So the rest of the series oh. is about their war against the scientists and trying to you know, free the other prisoners. So she's a true heroine. She's she's out there. She's yeah. Kind of she's she's pretty cool. unique. It's yeah. I had fun. I had fun establishing the series, and then you know I've had fun trying to make each book different. There's 15 books in the series now, and it's, oh. each time I have to challenge myself because I'm not going to just tell the same story over and over. You right. know exactly right. I do with this one. So with Shamakan, his arc, he was um. In the labs, there were three groups of these soldiers and each group had their own alpha. And so now he's second place to Idar, the Supreme Alpha. And so he's had, in the book, he goes through this arc from being, knowing how to keep his pack alive and going in the lab as prisoners to, okay, now we're free and we could have a future, but how do we evolve from, you know, just being concerned with our every day, just surviving every day and so. Yeah. So readers have responded to that one really nicely. I've had some really good comments that they, you know, they saw his growth over the course of this book and enjoyed that. I really love that when you do kind of concentrate on one character or whatever, and then, you know, you always, it's always great in romance, how you have that, whatever the nice ending to it and everything. But I always yeah. love knowing what happened the next day, <laughs> which I know isn't, isn't true to like the whole romance thing. You're supposed to be just happy that they lived happily ever after, but I always wanted to know. So I always loved like Nora Roberts and things like that when she would write a story and you got to see that those characters kind of still continued and had a life or had children or had whatever yeah. and that they they woke up the next day and uh, still were life went on yeah, yeah still well, and that's part of what i do in the series is obviously the other they all are still together so all the other characters come in jill and idar play a role in jamma can's book you know they they um, participate and some of the people from other the previous books participate i mean that's one of my favorite series is Side Changeling by Nalini Singh, and she's done that very successfully for years now. Of the, each book features one couple, but you still see the other yeah, ones that you nice. liked and enjoy. And so you do, you get glimpses of, oh, they've had a child or, oh, they're, you know, 
they're never unhappy, but oh, these things are happening to them. Yeah, so. but but there is life that or life intervened and they are yeah. still, you know, doing their, their thing. I think people right. like reading about that. They too. didn't just disappear that we shut yeah. the book, they were gone. Yeah, you know, no. yeah that's yeah. really, really nice. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, what do you envision, uh, or what do you use to envision your characters? So you are talking about completely different world. You've created this world in your mind. You do you storyboard? Do you um, do you do any no. of those things? Are you a plotter or a pantser? No, I just sit down and I write. I just the story just comes, and the story kind of tells itself to me. You know, I don't. Usually when I start, I know the beginning and the end. I know a couple of the major scenes and that's it. And then I just start at the beginning and work my way through and it just, it flows, so. And so when your characters are talking to one another, are you seeing, are you envisioning what they look like in your, when you're writing yeah, them? It's kind of like a movie in my head, you know, and so ah, it's yeah. hard to explain the process, but I mean, you're a writer, you know, but the process yeah. of how it gets out of my head, through right. my fingertips onto the <laughs> quote, paper. <laughs> yeah, I am very superstitious about my process. I don't mess with it at all. It's oh, that's really smart. Yeah, because well, I think, I think it some, works. So yeah, if it works, why change it? Why change yeah, it? I, yeah, I won't. I don't. So I'm not a good example for people who, you know, a lot of people do find things useful, like you were mentioning storyboarding and you know writing things on post-it notes and out, on outlining. And the way it works for me, if I do too much advanced thinking. I won't overwrite it because then my head, my muse says, oh, okay, we're done with that story. It's oh, wow. So you are a true answer line. then. You're, you're a true, you just write it as it comes. That's that's pretty cool. I, yeah. I actually tried to write my first story that way and then I struggled and I, I found, I thought I was a pantser, but I, I really did find out I was more of a plotter. So See, and that's good. There's, there's no one way that works for everybody. That's the important thing. <laughs> well, I wish I could do it more like that. I think that's I think that comes from a really organic place. So that's pretty cool. That's um, the only way I can do it. Ah, uh, okay. So so for my final question, and we kind of said this in the uh, author interview, but um, what when you talk about readers and stuff like that, what is the what would you like to say to your your readers that you have, or possibly new readers coming in? Is there any final thoughts for them? Well. I really appreciate them because otherwise it would just be me telling stories to myself and the cat. And it's so, <laughs> it's so wonderful to share the story and people like your characters and they're interested in what's happening. And I got an email just yesterday from a reader and she said, she said, oh, it's all your fault. You know, I stayed up all night reading this book and, I'm, <laughs> and I have other readers who say they reread the books uh -huh. and that's the highest compliment in the world to me. So. You know, they, I love writing, but the readers are what makes it all worthwhile because if it was just me and the cat, I don't need to write it down. You know, <laughs> sharing it, that's, that's the special part about it. And it's always so cool to me when people actually are enjoying the latest book or one of the older books. And, and I think, oh, phew, you know, I, I did it okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that. That's great. Yeah, okay. So well, I appreciate I, my readers. Yeah. They're, well, they, they make, they make us stay in business so it's a it's pretty awesome it's pretty awesome yeah. to be a dreamer like that so it's good um okay so like i said you uh already did your interview and i if you go on to uh jenny hackman forward slash spotlight you can find veronica scott uh on on my website or you can follow her on her own social media which you can also find on the website or on her website which is veronica scott dot wpcom staging dot Com. So um, do you have any other final words that you? <laughs> Thank you very much for having me as your guest. That was great. I enjoyed oh, it. I truly appreciate it. This has been, this is our, our new kind of thing that we're doing. And uh, it's, it's hard because when you're a writer, you kind of like to stay in your office and do your thing. Yeah. And, and so coming yeah. out and being on video and doing the video uh, recordings and all of those things, it's a bit intimidating for, for uh, somebody that's probably typically an introverted person. So <laughs> I truly appreciate you coming on and, and spending some time with us. It's been no lovely to get to know you. Wow. It's been nice to get to know you too. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>